And God, we just believe that you are going to move as we study tonight. God, I thank you that you're going to move as we pray. And Lord, we, we just thank you. You're so good. We give you all the praise for everything you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And as we all go our different directions, the youth groups going downstairs for their connection. There's a prayer group that is going into the, the prayer media room where they pray and they connect and here in-house tonight, we are going to have a time of connecting with God's Word and to one another. Amen? How, how, many, how many are going to anticipate Christmas? Okay, myself and Jade uh, up here. Jada. It's not just Jade, it's Jada. Uh, what about the rest of you? Are you anticipating Christmas yet? Well, tonight's Bible study, and for five weeks, we'll be missing a couple of Wednesday nights because of some of the holidays. Uh, we won't have service on the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving uh, because everyone is either traveling somewhere or they're preparing a meal, and praise the Lord for pies being baked and just all the wonderful things that takes place as we gather together as families and, and have that time. And then you can uh, double check this. I, I've been corrected before. Uh, didn't ask for it, but I got corrected. But I believe it's the 21st of December, which is a Wednesday night. And uh, we won't be having service that night. We'll be dismissing that for... Again, preparation of Christmas. If you've never been <clears throat> to a Christmas Eve service at Spirit of Life, you are missing something. For those watching in live tonight or in replay, if you're sitting here and you've never been to a Christmas Eve service here at Spirit of Life, I promise you it is an amazing time. Uh, actually, if you Google things to do for Christmas in the Fond du Lac area, Spirit of Life comes up within, depending upon what search engine or how things are going, in the top ten, and some days it comes up in the top five of things to do for Christmas. There's many that are hurting. Uh, we celebrated several new births in the last few weeks. And we're thankful for that. I won't say the names, but uh, I got reported to on Monday that the extension of one of the individuals from our church, their sister walked in and uh, found their two-year-old passed away in the bedroom. I go to support them on Friday at, at the funeral. I was also told over the weekend that the grandmother had passed away and lived to a, a wonderful age of 101. What a powerful life that is to live to be 101. Others have suffered through sickness and pain and some have broken toes. Others are struggling with some of their physical needs within their bodies. Uh, so tonight, if you have a need, uh, in house, raise your hand online. You can just do a hand emoji uh, or just put pray uh, in your comments. But let's go before the Lord and for Heavenly Father tonight. We are thankful that we get to come into Your presence, God. With everything going on around us, Lord, there is a a overwhelming peace that that's starting to grow within my spirit the more that I spend time praying and seeking you more in your word, God. I, I just rejoice over the peace that you give unto me. 
Lord, I pray for that peace to be over everyone. Lord, no matter what they are facing, God, that, that the trials and the tribulations, uh, those heartaches and, oh God, those heartbreaking times. God, how we need you. How we need you to reach down into our lives, God, and, and God, bring someone to us that, that can give us encouragement, that can be there through the emotional times. Heavenly Father, there's some days we just need a Christ in them to come forth and just wrap their arms around us, to lay hands upon us, to call us on the phone, to text us, to, to reach out through all the different ways, God, that we can keep in contact. God, we rejoice over new life coming into this world, a part of this congregation, the extension thereof, Lord. And Lord, we pray for those that are hurting for the loss of loved ones and, and filled with under, well, God, with the why questions and how come. But God, I pray for, again, your peace to overtake. God, we pray for the nation and the upcoming election. Lord, we pray for this community and the addictions and the well, Lord, all the spiritual battles that, that this community faced, Lord, we pray, God, that, that these Tuesday night prayer meetings and early morning times for my wife and I as we pray, Lord, that it becomes more than just moments. It becomes a movement, Lord, that we can pray for our children and our families and our youth and pray for our schools. And, and Lord, that we just find ourselves being connected to you, devoted in prayer. Now, oh God, have your way. Open up our hearts and ears tonight that we hear your word. Apply it to our lives. God, be more than just hearers, but be doers. God, find us faithful. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <clears throat> when we think of Christmas, it's not very far away now. In just two months, we are going to be celebrating one of the greatest holidays, one of the greatest gifts that any of us has ever received, and it's, it's not about what's wrapped up in paper or a bow, it's about our heart being aligned with God. Now, I want to encourage you tonight. These, these sessions of teaching that I'm going to be bringing to you is it just going to be talking about Christmas, but how we can prepare and celebrate who God is and that we can find that when we apply the word of God to our homes. How many of you want your home to be a refuge? And when people walk into your home, not just a house, but your home, that they feel the presence of God in everything. One of the things that my wife and I love is when people come into our home that they have that overwhelming peace. Even after we may have played a game or two, and, and some of them individuals are pretty aggressive when they come into our house. They don't like to lose, but there's a special peace within our home when our children come home. We find it odd that within an hour of them being there, we find them asleep somewhere in the refuge of our home. So tonight I want to share with you about celebrating God. Now, I, I need to talk to the crow's nest. I need to talk to you here. Is the red and the white showing up or is it glary? It's yellow on screen? Well, it ain't yellow. That, that's southern term for it. it is not yellow. It is red. It looks red down here, right? Reach over there and slap that camera and tell it to get its act together. But you can see it, right? If, you, if not, you can draw in. You don't, have to, you don't have to look at me. You can look at the screen. You can pull that camera down and, and let it be seen. 
I know there's a few individuals. My wife really likes looking at me. Um, don't you, baby? Shake your head a little harder where people can hear you. Shake your head. Okay. <laughs> she takes instructions well. This whole season that we're coming in is about celebrating who God is. And what happens is that we get in a big hurry, and this isn't a big hurry to skip over Thanksgiving because all of our Sunday messages this month is about generosity and about us being Christ-like and, and how God gives and how we can be grateful and how we can be thankful through everything. And this is a side note for you. How many like getting things? Well, every Sunday morning, it will be arranged that we will have a four-minute timer will come up on the screen behind us, and we're going to have four minutes of giving. Somebody says, well, it isn't very much. I've seen entire football games turn around in 45 seconds. Four minutes of giving every Sunday morning. And... Uh, God has blessed us, and we're going to bless you, and, and there might even be a few things on display that at any moment in that four minutes of giving, I could just turn and, and give it away. How many of you men in here, maybe some of the women would, would like to have a beautiful collector's knife? Uh, I, see, I, I see one woman and one man, the rest of you think, I don't want no knife, I'll cut myself. Yes, you will, it'll be sharp. There's all kinds of cool stuff coming. So this is the first week of this series, Celebrating God. It says in Psalms 32, verses 10 and 11, Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Verse 11, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. As I was preparing, I've been preparing several seasons of Bible studies and as God was laying this on my heart for this time that we have, I got to thinking about choosing our focus. Choosing my focus. See, the natural option is to be overwhelmed by life. I don't have a microphone up here. I'm not going to ask for a microphone to come up here. But if I ask you to tell me everything that you're going through, if we sh we're not shutting down Facebook, but if we shut down Facebook and I gave you an opportunity to share, how many of you have a lot to talk about in being overwhelmed by your life? Almost everyone's hand went up inside this building. See, the natural option is to be overwhelmed by our lives. Some, it's based upon being overwhelmed by our lifestyle. Now, let me express there. Why is our lifestyle so overwhelming? If you're constantly eating of the seed that you're supposed to be planting, there is no harvest. A lifestyle. Live for the moment and regret it in the future. That's a pretty simple statement, isn't it? Anybody ever live for the moment? You don't have to put your hands up because I know we all have. I know I have. Live for the moment and all of a sudden it's, a, oh, what did I do? What have I done? Because I chose a lifestyle. that was not productive as God desired it to be. The next one is, 
And this is a category I believe we all fall in. We're overwhelmed by our circumstances. The circumstances that we are in the midst of. Now, let me ask you, and you can put your hand up. I'll repeat it for, for Facebook. How many have ever chosen to do something that created your circumstances to be worse? A lot of hands, a lot of heads bobbing. Was those choices, now again, you don't have to reply, but were those choices based upon selfish desire? A lot of heads. I asked that of the Facebook. You're overwhelmed by your circumstances, but you're in the midst of your circumstances based upon choices that you chose to do in the moment or because it was a feel-good situation. The next one, overwhelmed by my shortcomings. <clears throat> Your shortcomings, those that have especially been pointed out to you. You know, someone else has told you of all those shortcomings in your life. I'm not good enough. I'm not fast enough. I'm not strong enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not thick enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. And, and all the shortcomings in our life, some people are overwhelmed because they're looking to get a better job, a better situation. They look and say, well, I'm not qualified for that. Their shortcomings. Overwhelmed by my imperfections. This is like body image. You're basing your opinion of who you are based upon what you see in a magazine or what some individual that you might have been in a relationship with that talk bad, maybe it was your parents or, or someone that you looked up to or you wanted to look up to and, and they spotted all your imperfections. Shortcomings and imperfections are two different things. When we look at what God wants for us, we have to learn to turn out Turn off, forgive me, let me use the right word. Turn off the voices that are outside trying to tear us down. When we choose our focus, we have to look at the spiritual option. To be overwhelmed by God. As your pastor, I've stood before you upon this platform behind this wooden desk. I've walked, I've been in the midst of, of coming down to the pews, and I've reminded you that the devil is a liar and God's word is true on a continual basis. Not because I don't have anything better to preach, but I feel there's nothing better to preach than to remind us who we are in God. Now, sin has to be dealt with. You know, you can't live with the devil and ask God to pay your rent. It just won't work that way. You can't serve the enemy on one day and then ask God to protect you the next without true salvation coming into our lives. But there's something about celebrating God in our lives. Again, it's more than just one day in the midst of December that we celebrate who God is, that Christ came. 
We have to find this holy delight and joy. Holy delight and joy is the great antidote to despair. Are you catching that this evening? I put holy delight down because there's something about coming into who God is and allowing his word to speak over us and, and to us and then speak around us. It's an atmosphere that we create for ourselves. Scripture says that the joy of the Lord is our, our strength. So if we have the Word of God surrounding us, we find ourselves coming into the presence of God. We, we do that, and I'm going to open that up in just a moment in the next verses. But it says that, that we come before Him and it's a choice that we make to celebrate God. Now let me just get real with you. You still see me? I'm smiling. Anybody ever get to the place you just don't feel like it? You got to be honest with yourself. Oh, I just don't feel like it. So you can't go through life always putting up this, this front. And whoever said, you know, fake it till you make it, my knucklehead said that. There's days in our lives that we need not to be down and out because I say to get up and in, but, but there's some days the reality of it is if it wasn't for God, I couldn't make it. There's some days I don't feel like making it. There are some days if my feelings was what I was living by, I would be in a corner in a big pile of wet Kleenex sucking on my kneecap, rocking back and forth. Why? Because the pressure of life can be overwhelming. Now, for us that are parents and we're grandparents, Oh, our children. How desperate our kids need to know who God is. We got relatives. We got nieces and nephews that, that go through life with all this despair because they've never known the joy of the Lord. They've never been enthralled in, in, in this holy delight that we can hold on to. It's not on your notes, but you need to write it on your paper. You have to get past feelings and come back to the knowing. The Word of God is filled with factual promises, and you have to know them. I'm going back a few years. But how many of you know that you're blessed in this house? We hold on to these scriptures. Everything's just coming undone. And we hold on to scriptures. No weapon formed against us is going to prosper. The gates of hell will not prevail. So how do we celebrate God in this next passage of scripture? In Psalms 100, it's on your paper, but let me read it to you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Back in the mid-90s, this was put to music. It was put to music long before the 90s, but it was put into, and we used to 
play it and sing it. In the first church that we pastored, And in between the verses, there was a little bridge chorus that was, Praise God, glory, hallelujah, praise God. And we would sing that, and we would sing this song for what it said. Look at verse 3. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that has made us, and not we ourselves, we are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. When we're feeling out, we have to, out of sorts, we have to celebrate who God is. <laughs> this passage of Scripture in Psalms 100 will give you an understanding. And we celebrate who God is. Why? Because our Lord is an almighty God. He is God. He is the God, the big G God, not a little G God, not some God that was made out of stone, metal, or wood, some God that was created in figment of, uh, of imagination. I knew what word. It was there. It was rolling around like a loose marble in there is what was happening a god he's our god the other thing that we learn to celebrate is that our lord is always good always we don't understand why things happen i've been doing this for a long time. And people come to me and still ask me, Pastor, why? Why did this happen? Why did that child lose their life? Why was that baby lost in the hospital? God, why was my family member killed and the drunk driver still lives? Why? Why? See, I can't answer that, but I have this assurance that God has everything under control, even if it doesn't go the way that I want it to. I celebrate God. I celebrate who He is. And this coming Christmas season, we will celebrate the birth of Christ, and we will bring reference to the God himself that gave his only begotten son that you and I, those that are watching online, we have this ability to receive him. So we celebrate what God has done. Now be honest with yourself tonight. If God doesn't do another single thing for you, we still have an eternity of praising and worshiping to be done. I know the big boy from Illinois sure does. I know if he doesn't do another thing that what he's already given me in salvation and assurance that he has healed me time and time again, that he has given me blessings and, and and it's just amazing who he is i worship him and i glorify him because of what he has done the facts are god created you and i for his glory 
the passage of Scripture that's there. It is He that hath made us. I celebrate God for what He's done because His claims on me as His own. We are His people. Jesus Himself said that we would be joint heirs. I almost made an error myself up here. Got tripped up on the cord. But joint heirs with Him in all that God has. See, when the world comes pressing in on us and we become overwhelmed with our shortcomings, our imperfections, those things that we, that we deal with, and it, some days it's hard to shake those dealings, isn't it? But we look back at what God's Word says. That you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That you're made in His image. He called us to have a purpose. He gave us a mandate. Before He ascended to heaven, He called everyone that was there to a place He says, go and tarry, and you'll be endued with power. The Holy Spirit came upon man, not just to speak in tongues and dance around inside of a church. The power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost came that men and women that would receive it would become witnesses, speaking with authority and a boldness and an anointing only by the hand of God Himself. And Christ says, when I leave, there will be a comforter. And that comforter will bring into remembrance those things that you've already been taught. You want to be a witness in your workplace? You want to establish? Wouldn't it be something? I won't name the name, but we got two supervisors in this building tonight. How amazing it would be if a Bible study would start and a revival would take place and all your co-workers would get saved. Well, Pastor, that's a, I already saw one. Oh, that's a, oh, how's that going to happen? Because God is able. We celebrate what God has for us. See, we celebrate because God leads us in his paths. As the writer wrote, we are the sheep of his pasture. Sheep are led. Sheep are brought forth. We follow what is led in the house of God. It's such a heavy burden. A very enjoyable thing that I am able to do as your lead pastor. I get to lead you in the walk that we're taking to get to the destination that God has for us. Nobody's going to follow someone that does not know where they're going. And I can tell you this evening, I follow who Christ is because he knows where he's going. He's already been there. So I follow him. I have so much in my life to be thankful for and grateful for. And one of those things is that God loves me unconditionally. His mercy is everlasting. I've said it before. If you've never written it down, I encourage you to write it down. I encourage you to text it to yourself. I'd encourage you to find a nice photo and text this on the photo that you can save as a reminder even in your galleries that there is nothing you've done that will cause God to love you less and there's nothing you can do to make him love you more now I've had some theologians want to question me on that but that's the fact 
Why? Because the Word of God says. He knew us before we ever came together, knitted together in our mother's wombs. He already knew us. For God so loved the world, we are all in the world, that he gave his only begotten son, and each one of us sitting here, me standing here, those watching at home, we are the whosoevers. And Christ gave his life that we would have life. So he's loved us unconditionally. The only thing that changes is when we submit and we ask God to forgive us and we accept him as our Lord and Savior and then we pursue his righteousness. So you can't ask God into your life without the intention of him coming alongside and changing who you are. There was an individual that lived in the hometown where I'm from. Brighton, Illinois is at home. That's where we lived all the way up until Annette and I went into ministry, and I only moved away from that area when I took the first church we pastored in 1996. But we were a small town. And that town, I believe, and Annette, hold your fingers up. There was four taverns, wasn't there? Plus the bootleg place over in Jugtown. That's the reason why they called it Jugtown. There was a big stump at the corner. You come by and put your $10, $20, whatever it costs. I never went there. And you drive around, you come back, and you get out, and there would be a jug down in the hollow of that stump. Jugtown. But there was a few rough boys back then. And one of them got saved. And he was asked, what happened to you? He said, I come to know who Christ is. His whole life changed, Tony. His whole life. He was no more drunk in town. He wasn't a fighter. He wasn't out chasing other men's women. He got himself right before God. His first name was Vernon. Vernon became the Baptist pastor in that community. Did a complete 180. When Vernon gave his life over to God, God did something miraculous. He'll still do the same thing. Why? Because his love is unconditional. The writers wrote, love one another. Christ says, love one another as I have loved you. The last scripture, the bottom of your handout, is Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. The Lord, thy God, in the midst of thee is mighty. New King James reads like this. The Lord your God in the midst of you is almighty. He will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will rest. He will rest in his love. He will joy over you with singing. What takes place when somebody comes to know who Christ? According to scripture, all heaven breaks out in chorus. For another one was redeemed. Church, we have so much to be thankful for as we look towards the Christmas season. What I dislike the most about Christmas is it's all put within just a few days in a month when it should be the heart of who we are year-round. Amen? Stand, if you will.
Heavenly Father, as we look to you, as we find that as we celebrate who you are, that we come into a place that, God, that we ourselves are coming home to you for Christmas. But, but God, as we look to these next studies, let us see you in the midst. Find us faithful, Lord, in Jesus' name. Next week, the Bible study, the title will be Creating a Home that's desired to come home to. Amen? So God bless you on Facebook. We'll see you Sunday. Amen. You're welcome. Now, let me ask. Every, everybody, don't shut me off microphone yet. Does everybody know the young girl up front? If you say no, I'm going to introduce her. Because Jay, what? Huh? She don't mind being on the spot. Well, she does. She'll, but if you've not met Jada, she is a joy. She works at Culver's over in, but she lives in Ripon and comes over here for church and a lot of times come by herself. So reach out to her. Let her know just how special I, I, where do you work at? Oh, the, you got horses. How many cows you got? Did you guys hear that? She has 800 milking cows and 60 calves. 